the first of the patron sponsored display shows. This is a new tier on my Patreon where for $35 you guys sponsor one of these $45 pieces of gorgeous art. They are always behind me in my set. They are those beautiful metal pieces that hang behind me with various different either minimalist art or comic book art or all those things. And basically the show will be you guys sponsor a piece of art that will live behind me and rotate through my set and then you guys can ask me two or three long form questions. So basically anything that I wouldn't be able to answer in a traditional uh, YouTube show or stream like why is Spider-Man my favorite character or what would you do to get into comic books or what's your favorite run of blank or anything that's longer form I can answer on this show. So this show basically is a long form Q&A. But in the middle of that, I'm also gonna be unboxing these disc plates for the very first time and basically explaining why I picked that disc plate and what that art means to me, what that um, project means to me. So in this case, I got two disc plates this month because I didn't get any questions from the patron yet this month. And this, by the way, is the very first person to jump on this Patreon tier. I just added this tier and I'm really excited to dive into it because there's so many different uh, things I love more than just comics. So I can talk about movies in a way that I don't get to talk about other places. I can talk about musical artists in a way I can talk about in other places all around these displays. So I'm building my set while also sharing with you guys, giving you recommendations and answering your questions. So this particular episode is brought to you by Pascal Bolfamonte. Pascal is my very first display patron and I'm really excited to dive into these. Like I said, I got two because Pascal hasn't sent any questions in yet. So if you guys want to ask any questions, I'm going to check the live chat after I do some unboxing. But first, you should see who's on my displates. Yep, that's how it's done. Co-hosted by Spidey Cat. That's, that's uh, actually I'm just going to leave the angle there. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and join Spidey as the co-host of this Fine, fine review. Okay, so disc plates are metal. They are basically giant, giant metallic frames that you put a magnet on your wall, you adhere it to your wall, it sticks for a long time. I've had the disc plates I have up for quite some time. And then you can adjust it, you can move it around, all around that magnet, and then you can swap them out, which is my favorite part. So if you notice my background changing show to show, it's because I have magnets on my wall and then the art itself changes. Um, they're extremely high quality. They're printed directly on the metal. So the metal itself is the art. So you have no worry of, of fading, of uh, really any damage coming to them because they are in fact very dense metal. So the magnets here, the adhesive goes on your wall. Then you attach the magnet, boom, to your piece of art. And then the art itself can slide around and it comes in a nice little cleaning area and recommendations of how to hang it. So it's a pretty cool program. Um, you can become a member and they give you free shipping. You, you pay like a monthly and then you get free shipping. Uh, and they're $44 each, but they go on sale uh, sometimes. So I, I figure I'm gonna try to get as many as I can, but you know, it's an expensive habit, art. Uh, this is the first one. So I just unsheathed and I haven't looked at it yet and shown you guys, but Spidey, you wanna do the honors? Boom. We've got a stunning minimalist poster for Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, one of my favorite movies of all time. So I love minimalist posters. I love minimalist art. I think it is much more interesting than just a standard promotional poster because you actually have to like know some details of the actual work. Uh, you usually need to have seen the movie to get the joke and the art. But this bad Larry is fantastic because it's got the director, of course, then you've got the title of the film, an iconic scene in this case, and then a quote down bottom. Uh, so this movie right here means so much to me because basically it was uh, the creator of Lethal Weapon. And growing up, I was a huge Lethal Weapon guy. Every Christmas, a lot of times, you know, beyond Christmas, we would watch Lethal Weapon. And Kiss Kiss came out right as I was starting to understand this humor as an adult. Um, Kiss Kiss as a, a neo-noir detective movie with Val Kilmer, Robert Downey Jr., Michelle Monaghan, Shannon Sossman of A Knight's Tale. Um, and it's just so well written, it's so well acted, the action is stunning, it's everything I want in a movie. And it's tied for first for my favorite comedy of all time. This and In Bruges are my favorite comedies ever. And the poster is perfectly fine. It's, um, you know, Downey Jr., blue, there's a white background, him and Val Kilmer are like blue silhouettes. It's a perfectly fine poster, but this, the color, the vibrancy, the having to know the Easter egg of the joke, uh, the quote at the bottom is my fingerprints here, the dog's got it. 
all of that makes it so this is way more personal and I love art that's personal. I love the emotion I get from art that, that is like an inside joke. Uh, and this, if you haven't seen Kiss Kiss by Man, you'll have no idea what's going on, but if you have seen it, you'll get this moment of like, oh, I get that, that's a good joke. So this is my first display of minimalist movie poster art, thanks to Pascal Bolfamonte, who was my very, very first patron of the arts, patron of the wall arts, display art. So there's my first piece, and I've got one more. Uh, if you were just joining the stream, I got two this month instead of one because Mr. Pascal had not sent me a question, so I figured I'd unbox two. Um, I'm very, very excited about this next one. It is much more uh, like the rest of my art in the house, but I figured if I got one minimalist movie poster, I could get another comic book thing. So I also got a comic book thing. So this is Joelle Jones, who is a genius one of the best artists working. She is currently writing and illustrating the Wonder Girl comic book, and this is a character that I love so very dearly that is often written poorly, uh, that is much better than, than a lot of people give her credit for. She's very well portrayed in most of the movies and most of her portrayals. She's been played magnificently by Michelle Pfeiffer, as well as stunningly by Anne Hathaway, and I think the one that is going to uh, you know, you can't compete with Michelle Pfeiffer, but if you're going to do something differently and make it your own and make it very sexy, awesome, and sassy, and intelligent, and vivacious, and holy shit, it's Catwoman, that's going to be Zoe Kravitz. So this piece of art is Joelle Jones, and uh, it is one of my favorite pieces of Catwoman art ever. Uh, I haven't seen it as a display yet. I am very, very excited to see it as a display, um, because they print so well on these things, and let's see. Let's see this Joel Jones piece. You guys are gonna watch it with me. You ready? Oh, look at that. Man, that's stunning. So this is Joel Jones. This is her Catwoman. And this is printed on metal, so the detail is absolutely staggering. The white will never fade. It won't, is likely to get dirty. Um, you can also see my reflection in my phone in the reflection on the plastic. So it is an inception in my phone of Catwoman goodness. Uh, this is just so pretty. Holy, this is one of my new favorites. This is so good. In fact, to get rid of the glare as well as to show you the detail in the printing, this is how displays look on your wall. Very careful of fingerprints. Look at that work. Get the magnet off the back. Man, I love this. So I will now have Catwoman looking over me through many a show and this will live with me, with all the detail, all the glory. Oh, this is such a good piece of art. So the reason I love Catwoman is Batman's all about control. Batman is all about his one rule. Batman's all about, you know, justice and vengeance and his war on crime. His, his always, you know, steadfast decision to do that. And Catwoman represents all of the anarchy of not doing that without being the Joker. Um, Catwoman is such a great foil for Bruce Wayne. I love their love so very much. I love how interesting she is with her morality. I love how captivating she is in her portrayals. I love the character from the beginning. And I really enjoy Tom King's Batcat series. I really enjoy what Tom King did with the character. Um, I really am loving the current Catwoman run. Uh, it's on issue 31 in the comics right now, so you're not too, too far behind, but I'm consistently in love with the character of Catwoman in that run. Uh, in fact, at issue like 26, it's a, it's kind of a reboot. She starts to take over a different um, city as like its vigilante, and it's got me fully back in love with Catwoman, and this piece is helping. So display. They don't sponsor me. Display does not pay me to talk about them. Uh, in fact, I needed a Patreon sponsor so I could buy them. I needed the Patreon sponsor so I could afford my Display Habit. I'm not saying this out of them paying me a dollar. I'm paying them. Um, they are stunning. Like the, the way they do their work, uh, they're individually numbered. They are very, very precise with their detail. And one of mine came out scuffed. 
Uh, and after I proved it was scuffed in the mail, they sent me a new one. So they're very hands-on with their customer service. Um, yeah, look at this beast. Ignore the cat hair in my shirt and just look at cat woman. So those are the two disc plates I got for the first month of the disc plate club. Like I said, there are about 30 disc plates uh, that I want in addition to the 10 I already have. I have quite a few as it is, but these are thanks to Pascal Belfamonte. These are the first month of the disc plate club. Normally right here is where I would answer any questions Pascal had, but I did not get uh, any questions from the gentleman just yet but I will be jumping in the chat right now to look at those, but we got Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and Joelle Jones's Catwoman, and these are stunning, I'm so excited. Okay, we've got Sleeping Cat. Try not to, try not to move the Sleeping Cat, I'm gonna see if you guys send any questions. All right. Let's see here, live chat, and we'll wrap this up. Pascal, thank you so much for being the first of this tier. Thank you so much for uh, helping me get one of these, and I'm excited for next month. I already know which ones I'm gonna get for next month. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to do this, this new show where I do long form Q and A here. And uh, let's see what questions we got. Um, Ryan Cross did not enjoy Wrath of Man. That's, that's a-okay, not, not everything's for everybody. Um, let's see, Spidey Cat is here, Ryan Cross. Uh, Lewis, welcome, good sir. I know you came in late to the last stream. Welcome to this one. Uh, what do you feel about the Warner Discovery whole thing? Love you, man. Love you, too. I talked about it on the last stream, but I will say that I think it's a good thing. I think it's a really good opportunity for DC to have a new batch of creatives. I think it's a good opportunity for a fresh start. I think that AT&T was a communication company. Discovery is at least a storytelling company. It's a, not exactly the place I would have expected them to go, but I think it's a great thing for DC. I think it's a great opportunity for them to kind of find a new path, and I'm very hopeful is the short answer to that question. Hopeful. Very hopeful. Uh, all right. Let's see. Oh my, I agree. I agree, Lewis, that art is oh my. Um, which one do I like more, Catwoman or Black Cat? I think they're both very similar foils to their heroes. So Catwoman is a criminal that, um, you know, is selfish in a way that works for Batman because he loves her. Black Cat was selfish in a way that didn't work for Spider-Man because she loved Spider-Man and not Peter Parker but he still loves her in a very specific way, in a very lustful way, in a very playful way. So all of Spider-Man's responsibility is kind of undermined by Black Cat's playfulness, and all of Batman's responsibility is kind of undermined by Catwoman's criminal aspect. So I think that Spider-Man's more forgiving of the criminal aspect than Batman is, but they both love their respective other. So Catwoman and Black Cat are both very fascinating characters. I love both of their solo titles. I love both characters very much. Um, they both mean a lot to me because I think it's interesting to have that kind of empowered um, dynamic between a man and a woman. I, I don't like when in comic books there's like a commanding male lead that the woman doesn't really have a thing to do except be like a damsel. Uh, I like when the, the, the female lead is, is in power. Um, and those characters, when they're written right, are. Uh, I've always liked strong women and those characters are strong women. So they both mean a lot to me and uh, I like them both for different reasons. Uh, all right. I am hooked on displays. Curtis Mason, welcome to the suck. It's expensive and lovely. Display, sponsor me. Sponsor me, and I'll talk about you even more. But for right now, I'm gonna talk about you once a month in this new Patreon tier. As long as Pascal is here, I'll be here talking about displays. Curtis, welcome to displays. Uh, R.S.T. Hilaire. R.S. Hilaire? Not sure how to say your name, but welcome, R.S.T. Hilaire. Uh, I just finished Kiss My Bay not an hour ago. I tweeted at you the other day when I bought it. Oh, no shit, I saw that tweet, and I didn't retweet because I was going to sleep, but I need to retweet that immediately. Yes, I am very, very honored that you thought of me, and I am fucking so stoked that you uh, you got that movie. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and that's amazing timing with this unboxing of the poster, and hell fucking yeah. Tied for first. Uh, it, is, it is tied one and two within Bruges, my favorite comedy of all time. Fantastic. Thank you for retweeting me. Um, I wasn't seeing the cat hair, but now that you mentioned it, now I can't stop seeing it. You know, Spidey is furry, and frankly, it is part of his charm, but it's also part of the problem of all of my clothing, and he's well worth it and so handsome. 
Um, that's why you get this sleeping. Uh, has anyone ever told you that you look like the guy who played Riggs in the Lethal Weapon TV series? I saw that dude and thought it was you immediately. Clay Crawford and I have actually met, and the time-space continuum did not implode. Uh, Clay is lovely. I am a huge fan of the Lethal Weapon show. I'm a huge fan of the Lethal Weapon movies, and I'm a huge fan of Clay Crawford. He actually has a movie, a new movie out in theaters right now called The Killing of Two Lovers, which I'm dying to see but have not seen yet. But Clay, the man, is absolutely incredible. He's one of the best actors working today. Uh, he is an absolute darling with his time. He's super friendly. He's super compassionate. He's super charismatic. And he is the only person to play Riggs. Um, I mean, I love Mel. So the only person after Mel, the only current person to play Riggs. Clayne Crawford is a goddamn force. Uh, big fan. And I take that as a huge compliment because he is also handsome. Uh, all right. No worries, my man. Absolutely love it. You're also one of the first people to say my last name correctly. That makes me so happy. Yes, as someone with the name Koi Jandro, who no one says correctly, I've been literally, I, I think Christian Harloff has said my name 10 different ways a season. Uh, I love Christian to death, but he has never gotten my name right. Uh, no one gets my name right. That makes me very, very happy. So hell yeah, honored. Thank you. Uh, all right, that is gonna be it for this show. Once again, normally we will be answering long form questions along with the unboxing of the posters, but for now, uh, there was not a question with the new patronage. Um, that said, Pascal Bel, uh, Pascal Bolfamonte doesn't have to uh, have questions. So what I could do is if there aren't questions, you guys can ask them at the top of the show and I will get into them then. And that is a way to do it that way. Pascal, no pressure. You don't have to ask questions. Thank you so much for being a patron. Anyone that is watching this that is just a, uh, a finder of mine on YouTube, my Patreon has many, many different tiers. Uh, $5 is a Discord. It's like a 90s comic book store where we all talk about movies and TV and comic books and everything going on in our lives, uh, fitness, all sorts of stuff. And it's this great Discord. It's a great community. It's the $5 tier. $10 tier is the patron-only podcast. Every single week I put out a podcast with me and Jake Lloyd, my producer of KoiCast, where we watch and talk about every single movie and TV show, reviewing everything we've watched. So like five to 10 to fucking sometimes 15 uh, movies and shows we review every single week on the patron only podcast that is at the $10 tier and you get the Discord. Every single tier you get everything beneath it as well. So $10 you get the $5 tier as well. For $15 you get all of that and you get a letter graded review of all the comics that I read that week. So I'm reading between 30 and 40 comics every single week. I'm reading over 200 a month or about 200 a month. If you want to know what comics I'm enjoying, you can see a letter grade for all of those. And I do a picture grid of my top nine books of the week, which I often post to the Discord. Um, so you can see my top nine in the Discord. You can see all of the comics I've rated, everything I've read, even the garbage stuff. I'll rate something in D or an F. Like if it's bad, I'll let you know. All of that is at the $15 tier. Next up, we got the $25 tier. You get the comics, you get the patron pod, you get the Discord, and for $25, you also get that with movies. So every show I'm watching, every movie, if I'm seeing stuff, uh, screenings, I can get in there and rate stuff and review it before the embargo's up because I'm just getting a letter grade. I won't get in trouble from the studios and because it's behind a paywall of the Patreon. Um, so literally every movie I've watched, whether it's, I just watched When Harry Met Sally, but I also just watched Pretty Woman, but I also just watched Fast Nine. You can see what I thought of all of those with letter rankings every single month. I do that twice a month for $25. You get all of my movies, all of my TV, all of the books I'm reading, all of the comic books I'm reading, access to the Patreon podcast as well as the Discord. For 35, you get this. Uh, you guys are basically sponsoring a display. You are telling me uh, two or three questions you want answered long form. I will break down what my favorite rapper is, what my favorite musical artist is, what my favorites, why I love peanut butter, uh, why Spider-Man is better than blank, why this run of Spider-Man is great, what's the best first comic to read, anything that's long form. I can break down for you two or three questions every single month. I will answer long form and you're sponsoring a display which will go on my wall on my set. It's going to rotate in and out and I'll be breaking down like I did today what that character means to me, what that movie means to me. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is, I think, one of the best uses of metamodernism, breaking the fourth wall. It's one of the best neo-noirs of all time. It's some of the best comedy writing in the last 20 years. It is so very, very, very perfect. Uh, so yeah, I'll be breaking that down for this Patreon tier. This is the $35 tier. Then, but wait, there's even more. $50 is a movie watch along. So you guys love the watch alongs that you used to do at Collider, me watching um, Avengers Endgame, talking about a commentary on what comic influenced it, full feature length audio commentary, $50 a month, you sponsor that watch along and you get the comic book ratings, the movie ratings, the Patreon only podcast, the discord for a hundred dollars. You can tell me what to watch period. So I've never watched my hero academia. I've never watched a lot of very interesting avant-garde 
psychosomatic films. Um, right now, the tater tot tier is $100. You tell me what to watch and I will do all of the research I do for the companies I work for and then review it. And I do that review live. You guys are in the live chat. We have a full experience. So it's about two hours worth of content. So it's like, you know, six episodes of a TV show or a two hour movie, it's a little lower that happens. But we basically do a movie or TV show and I do my research on the actors, the director, I review the thing live. It's like a 20 minute review and that is the $100 tater tot tier. $250 and then the $100 tier is everything beneath it except for the watch along because it kind of replaces the watch along because I'm doing the review on my own time and putting like four or five hours of research into it. And then finally, $250 is the producer tier. You're basically sponsoring my work and you get uh, all those things and a shout out at the bottom of every single episode. You get a thank you. And uh, right now, Heather Long, patron saint of awesome, is my producer tier. Heather Long has literally saved me in quarantine. Uh, I don't know if I would have survived lockdown without Heather Long being an absolute saint. Heather, thank you for everything. She is the patron saint of all of this. She is uh, she's basically producing, helping me eat uh, and get through lockdown until the studios are open, until red carpets are back, until cons are back, until my job is back. So that is what my Patreon is. Those are all the tiers. And remember, each one stacks and offers everything below it. This is the $35 tier. These are about 44 bucks, so I figured that's reasonable. Um, and then I unbox, show you guys, talk about it, and then answer some questions. So this is the first of its kind. I hope you had fun. I had fun. And this is where I would normally answer the questions, but instead I just broke down lots and lots of stuff. Uh, John Perillo, hello. Good to see you. Uh, how weird is it to hear someone talk? How weird is it to hear someone talk while inhaling? That being said, have you heard someone talk that way? I have to talk that way. I'm I'm circular breathing at all times. Like I'm inhaling and then talking and then exhaling and then talking. Yeah, I think I think it's very possible. I mean, I I guess it sounds weird if you do it badly. Um, interesting question. Looking forward to hearing the heavy and hotline episode this week. It is very hot and hotline heavy, good sir. It is very hot and hotline heavy. Uh, and then finally, also sorry for spamming. So many thoughts coming in sporadically. Sorry, you got nothing to apologize for, Ryan Cross Project. Travis, you've got nothing to apologize for. Also, this in the Quite Cast helps keep me track of what day it is. Oh, well, new episode tomorrow, because tomorrow is, in fact, Wednesday, which is Koi Cast Day. In fact, if the audio came out okay, I sat down with Jim Starlin and the creators of the Slow City Blues, and that will be, while I'm out of town, that'll be the Koi Cast that drops. Uh, I did an hour with Jim Starlin and his incredible inker, Jamie Jameson, and uh, then I sat down with the Slow City Blues guys and had lots of really cool stuff coming in interviews that we did at Golden Apple Comics. If you guys are a fan of me, check out Golden Apple Comics. They will mail you comics all over the country, all over the world. If you're in LA, check out Golden Apple Comics in person and tell you I sent you, you might get a discount. Uh, the Golden Apple let me use uh, the store and me and Jim Starlin, the daddy of Thanos and Shang-Chi and the Infinity Saga and so many things, uh, Jim Starlin and I had a full exclusive interview about Dreadstar. Dreadstar is coming back uh, very soon. Some places it's available now. It is an awesome Kickstarter funded book that is gonna be released hardcover. It is stunning, actually. Wait right there. Dreadstar uh, is so good. I love this book, and the review and interview about this is going to be next week's Koi Cast. As long as the audio uh, is up to Jake's standards, um, this is going to be what is coming at you over on the Koi Cast for tomorrow. Billy doo, Billy doo, Billy doo. Actually, I don't want to go back over there. All right, I see two more questions, and I'm going to wrap up, you lovelies. Um, if I could drop an audio clip in chat, I would show you would know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, it's tricky with the YouTube. It's very limited. It's only text. Uh, and then John asks, what is my favorite Deadpool movie? The first one. Um, there's only three, right? X and Origins Wolverine's garbage. Deadpool 2 is good, but Deadpool 1 is great. Uh, Deadpool 1 has the heart of the character that I see the character as. It is about love. It is about being an exposed wound. It is about, um... You know, Deadpool's funny because he hides. Deadpool uses comedy as a defense mechanism, so I felt the first movie captured that more. And the love story of Deadpool is part of what I love about the character. It's, it's you know, he's not always in a, in a romantic relationship, but Deadpool wants to be good. He wants to aspire for more. Deadpool wants the world. So the love embodying that in the first film really captures that character for me. So the first film is near perfect. It's one of my favorite comic films of all time. Uh, so Deadpool 1 is my favorite Deadpool movie. All right. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to Pascal Bofamonte. I appreciate you so very much for being the first display tier. These were the displays I got this week. This is the Dread Star interview coming on Coycast next week. This was Joel Jones, Catwoman, one of my favorite characters of all time. 
This was the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang Minimalist poster, one of my favorite movies of all time. These are gonna go on my wall and rotate in and out of shows. Thanks to Pascal, and thank you for watching. Thank you to Spidey for co-hosting. Thank you to everyone in the live chat. I appreciate the hell out of you all, and thank you to the entire Koi Pond and all of my patrons. You guys are the absolute best. I will see you, well, you'll hear me tomorrow on Koi Cast. I will see you next week for more Koi Cube on the live action, and I'll see you Friday on the Schmodown where we've got a team's championship match, Ann Horowitz versus Paul Walter Hauser. You're gonna see me everywhere. I'm on these internets. I'm on these internet streets. I will see you soon, you lovelies. I appreciate the hell out of you. Have a great night. Stay sane, stay sweaty, stay awesome. Bye guys.